So here's the big question. How are entrepreneurs like us, who have been hustling and struggling to make it to success, who seem to make it one step forward, only to fall two steps back, who are dedicated, determined, and driven, how do we finally break through and win? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Brian Kelly, and this is the Mind Body Business Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. I say this every single opening, and I mean it with everything uh, inside of me. We have a phenomenal show lined up for you tonight. I cannot wait for you to, um, to meet the amazing Steve Brown. He is coming on. He's sitting in the wings, waiting anxiously to be brought to center stage, and I can't wait to share him with you. And you're going to be blown away. He's got this genius concept behind podcasting and doing live shows, and I can't wait to share that information with you. Uh, really had me excited. I literally had goosebumps under this blazer. I'm not kidding. This It doesn't take much to get me excited. But the Mind Body Business Show, what is that all about? It is uh, what I call the three pillars of success. I began studying only successful people uh, for a period of about a decade. And what I found were those three things kept bubbling to the top of what made these individuals more successful than, say, someone like me. And over and over and over again, these three things would come to rise to the top. And those three things are part of the very title of the show. So mind being mindset, and that is each individual to a person, these are successful people, had a very powerful and even more importantly, very flexible mindset. There was body. Body was literally, they took care of themselves nutritionally and they exercised on a regular basis. It was interesting walking in their paths with them. Some of them uh, I knew personally that I would work with and I would notice they never drank alcohol and and they just were healthy all the time. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting. That's really cool. And then business. Business is so multifaceted. Uh, and what happened there is these successful individuals had mastered the skill sets that are necessary to build and grow a thriving business. Now, that may sound easy, but there are many skill sets that one must master. And to master any one thing can take a long time. I mean, we're talking about skill sets like marketing, uh, team building, sales, systematizing, leadership. I could go on and on. There are so many skill sets that are required to run a successful business. The good news for all of us is we don't personally have to master every single one of those skill sets and the many more I didn't even mention. If you just master one, just one, and I actually mentioned it in the opening uh, just a second ago, then the rest can fall into place very easily. And that one skill set is the skill set of leadership. Once you have mastered that, you are now empowered to delegate the tasks out to those who have mastered the appropriate skill sets to help you grow your business and really crush it and take it to the moon. And another wonderful trait of very successful people I found during my studies was to a person, each and every one of them, they were very avid readers of books. And with that, I'd like to segue into a segment I like to affectionately call bookmarks. Bookmarks, born to read. Bookmarks, ready, steady, read. Bookmarks, brought to you by reachyourpeaklibrary.com. Yes, reachyourpeaklibrary.com. Uh, by the way, real quick note for all of you is I would so love for each of you, for yourselves, not for me, for you to take notes as we go through this show because you're going to be learning about a lot of phenomenal resources and incredible information from Steve Brown, who's coming on right after this. And I would hate for you to miss that because you happen to go off clicking and looking at another website like reachyourpeaklibrary.com. Instead of doing that, just write it down and visit the resources after the show. That way you'll never miss a golden nugget. I would hate for that to happen for you. And so just stay with us throughout the show. Um, that's for you. That's my gift. <laughs> Reach Your Peak Library. That is a website that I had put together, had my team build that. And you may, you may not believe me, but I did it with you in mind. 
This is a gift website. This is for you. This is not for me. What it is is a compilation of the books that I have personally read and vet that had a profound impact on me on either business or personal or both. And those are only these are only books that I have read. So not every book I've ever read is in this list. And I'm actually a little bit behind. There are more coming on here. And there probably will be another one added to the list by a certain somebody who's a guest tonight. Just a hint. Uh, we could be adding another beautiful book once I get through the reading of it. And here's the thing. Just find a book that resonates with you. The first one. You don't need to go through this whole list. It's not alphabetic. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I just put them in there as I pulled them out of my account from Audible and grabbed it, the graphics and said, here, go build this. And all of those buttons, by the way, they go to Amazon. So this is not here to make money. Um, it's here for a gift for you to give you a one-stop shop. Um, big boom. Oh, my goodness. Mel Cutler, that's my mentor. Amazing guy. Uh, just incredible, incredible information here. So please do take advantage of this. Reach your peak library dot com uh and yeah you'll you'll see your life change for the better i personally didn't even start reading books on a regular basis till i was 47 i'm now 56 and i just my gosh i started devouring them after i learned what a great impact i had on my life and so i just implore that you do the same because that's what we do we like to model uh excellence we like to give the things that work to you so all you have to do is, is copy it just do what we're doing and you'll see your success increase. Speaking of increasing success, it's time for Brian to stop blabbing and bring on the true star of this show, Mr. Steve Brown. Here he comes. It's time for the guest expert spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. It is the one, the only Steve Brown. Yes. Brian, everybody loves the show, and I'm so proud to be on here. Ah, thank you, my brother. And it's gonna, they're gonna love it even more, if you can imagine that, after they've seen your brilliance on this show. So here's the thing, Steve. I love, I love what I get to do. And why that is, is because I get to meet and get to know amazing individuals like yourself. And I'm not kidding. Uh, this, this has been the greatest relationship building tool I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. And they're genuine. They're not fake. They're not phony. They're not Facebook. Hey, check out my link and go buy my crap. It's none of that. It's just getting to know somebody and learning their brilliance. And I just, I love doing this. Um, before I give you a formal introduction that you richly deserve, uh, Steve, real quick, we'll do a little bit of housekeeping and then we'll, we'll jump in. Does that sound cool with you? That's awesome. Right above Steve's left shoulder, if you're watching, that's over on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see a red logo. That is our sponsor. And one lucky winner, we do this every show. There you go. Thank you, Steve. Vanna Steve, I love it. <laughs> one lucky winner will win a five night stay at a five star luxury resort compliments of the big insider secrets that is that red logo up there that is my buddy jason nast and his company and because of him we're able to do this every single show so you must stay with us live till the end and that's how i will announce how you can enter that's where i will do that and then we have a couple more we're going to get rolling so if you're struggling with putting a live show together and it's overwhelming and you want a lot of the processes done for you while still enabling you to put on a high quality show, which is very important, and connect with great people like Steve Brown and grow your business all at the same time, then head on over to CarpetBombMarketing.com. Carpet Bomb Marketing, saturate the marketplace with your message. And one of the key components that is contained in the Carpet Bomb Marketing System is one that you'll learn how to absolutely master. It's the very service we use to stream our live shows right here and actually right now on the Mind Body Business Show. And over the course of, goodness, over nine years now of, of streaming, uh, we have tried many of these quote unquote TV studio solutions. And I'll tell you, StreamYard is the best of the best. It combines supreme ease of use along with unmatched functionality. So you can start streaming high quality, professional looking live shows for free 
with StreamYard right now. So write this down. Don't visit it. Write it down. The website is ryp.im forward slash stream live. ryp.im forward slash stream live. And you can grab it for free and take it for a whirl and start your live video show right away. Now let's get back to the man of the hour. Yes, you know who that is. There he is. That's the handsome guy right there. The one with the hat. That's the handsome guy. That's how you know. Um, here's the thing. Steve Brown. He believes entrepreneurs are the invisible heroes of today's economy. Mm -hmm. You risk your future with no guarantees. You all felt this, haven't you? And you fight hard to provide products and services that improve our lives. You also happen to provide jobs for almost half of the American workforce. Steve is the author of The Golden Toilet. I love that title. He's the host, there it is. He's the host of the ROI Online Podcast, and he's the owner of ROI Online, an internet marketing agency. Too many vowels in there for me. His right. mission is to help you avoid wasting money and time with the frustrating demands of modern marketing. I can so relate to all of that, Steve. Mm -hmm. Now, officially and formally, welcome to the show, my friend. This is going to be a blast. I cannot Thanks wait. Thanks for having me. I'm proud to be here. Yeah, and I, I'm equally as excited to have you. And one of the things I like to do in the beginning is actually, we're not, we don't necessarily need to go in order of mind, body, business, but I like to open it up with mindset because in my humble opinion, our every, everything, you know, where you are today, success, your level of success or your lack thereof. And when I say your, I'm saying generally your, everyone listening is 100% due to what's going on between your own two ears. Mm -hmm. It is no one else's fault if you're not successful. And yeah, it is your, you are the reason if you are successful. <laughs> so it's it's your fault either way. Let's put it that way. And one is better than the other. So for you, Steve, you know, being an entrepreneur as, you know, th that was a great bio. I love that. Uh, we're always fighting hard. There's, there's an undertow. There's an implication that it's not all that easy to be an entrepreneur. It's not. And we risk everything, like you said. So knowing every day brings with it challenges, not just we're going to get up and we have a challenge we already know about, but new ones are going to hit us during the day, every single day. What do you do? What's going on in that big, beautiful brain of yours under that hat? When you get up in the morning, what is going on You know, to get you going, to keep you motivated, to keep striving, to keep excelling with all these road bumps and, and setbacks along the way? And then how do you do that all day long and then continue day after day, week after week, month after month? What is going on in that noggin of yours? Yeah, I don't know what's going on in there. Sometimes I sure suffer because whatever's going on in here. But, you know, as humans, our eyes are set in the front like binoculars. OK, and we're our brains are big because we needed extra processing power for our eyes. We have the best eyes on the planet. We see details. And that means that we're used to looking out and going towards something, aiming at something. And there's an, this innate fulfillment for overcoming challenges on the way to somewhere. And I think that when I finally started my company, I felt like I was more in charge of where I was going. It wasn't easier. It wasn't like, uh, it wasn't roses and, and candies. It, it was hard. But at the end of the day, I was deciding where I was going and it was fulfilling because overcoming, building a team, going together, these things were so fulfilling. And it just, I think that's what really gets me out of bed is doing things and just growing, learning, overcoming. Yeah. And so do you, do you often think about the outcome, you know, like what is it you're working toward either mm -hmm. today or this week or this month, but is that usually a driving force for you? Have you found? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, if you read any of Gino Wickman's books, he talks about the visionary is generally an entrepreneur is a visionary, right? And so that means they have this idea. They see where they're going. The challenge is getting that 
out of your head and written down clearly enough so that the team that wants to help you get there can see and go to the same place. But I'm always going to this place. That's where my energy comes from as I'm going to, to, and I'm building what I envision. It's just that it often takes longer than you want. Right. And you, you run into all those details that you don't want to think about That's someone else's, you know, (laughs) That takes the energy out of me, oh, but yes. I, right? You know that you've got that one person on the team. You go, hey, this is what we're going to do. And then they go, hey, ask you 200 questions. <laughs> okay. And I'm going like, what is wrong with you? But it, I need them. I need the question asked. I need to get those details worked out. But it's not me. <laughs> yeah, it's like after they go through all these questions, like I could have done this myself twice. <laughs> right. <laughs> but... And so- it wouldn't have like been as good. Yes. Yeah. I always like to point the finger in the mirror when those things happen for myself and say, how can I communicate better? Because there's obviously a disconnect of some kind. <laughs> it happens all the time. Right. You know, everyone has different personalities and different interpretations and all those things. And that's it just it, it can take time. It can mm-hmm. take time to find that sweet spot of the proper method of communicating with an individual when that kind of thing happens. And it happens all the time. It's not like you're. it's a rare thing. Uh, it's just about navigating and having the patience and the determination and being aware that it happened and that there's a way that we can together improve that going forward. And so, yeah, yeah I, I totally relate though. <laughs> it's like, good Lord, if you ask me one more question, I'm just going to yeah, I, I'll have it done already. <laughs> yes. But if you think about the number one challenge a leader has is to clearly communicate the vision in their head. It's the hardest thing. The people we admire, the books that we buy, the the videos that we watch of these people, they're so eloquent. They sat and really got it distilled and clear. They've got this clarity and they just go, oh my gosh, it makes so much sense. But as a leader, we need to do the hard work and get there too. It's one of the... It's one of the things that you need to really get good at as a leader. I'm not there yet. I would like to offer a gift that I never have. I've never said this publicly before. Um, I I usually keep it close to the chest, but it's been a godsend. And I know you do a lot of live shows, Steve. Uh, One of the key elements for me and my team being 100% in alignment with our mission, our purpose and everything, Mm -hmm. every show, every one of these shows, I have automatically transcribed when it's over. Well, it's like Siri and it makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so one of my gifts to give back, you'll learn about this tomorrow (laughs) through my automated system is to offer you the embed code of what will be this video and the written word that is animated beneath it and Mm -hmm. search it and see every word. It's, It's phenomenal. But the thing is, is it makes mistakes like Siri. So what did I do? I started having my team go in and do the correction. Mm. when they go and do the correction they'll they'll see something and hear it because it's both the word and the audio everything they get all of the modalities or juices flowing but they'll see an an error they'll have to back it up change it correct it and play it again so they hear many parts over and over and over again and repetition is the key to mastery they will know your value system they will know your culture everything about your business everything what's is important to you as steve brown without you having to train them or lift another finger and you're getting another uh, value added service taken care of on the, on the same time. So wow. thank you. It has worked. I, I cannot tell you, I, it blew my mind. Uh, actually, one of the first time I had one of my team members do it, that's what she came back with. You know, because of that, I now know, uh, I know you very deeply. Like, wow, really? Wow. And you're helping your values. I'm like, oh, I didn't expect this. This is awesome. <clears throat> so we've done a hundred and, I don't, I've lost count. I don't know. We're at 160 shows or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of them have been transcribed and, and corrected by the team. And so it's awesome. just been a godsend. So anyway, uh, that was a big uh, um, derailment there. But <laughs> I thought, thought it was important. Um, so you, you mentioned one book, or at least the author, Gino Wickman. Uh, mm-hmm. What would be, uh, if you were to pick one business book, that has inspired you the most of all the books you've read? I know that'd be difficult. I don't know if I could do it. Um, but what, what would be the book that comes to mind first? You know, one book I really, 
that really changed my paradigm about the responsibility, what I need to, the way I really need to look at what I'm doing with my business in the modern world of marketing is a book by Michael Hyatt called Platform. And it's an excellent book. It really connected all the dots. You know, we, we go into this business challenge as an entrepreneur, we're going to attack every problem, whether we have all the tools, knowledge or not. But when I read that book, it's like, oh, now I know what I was feeling. I just didn't have the right words to say it or to communicate it to someone. That's what I wanted to do. It's a great book. Excellent book. Interesting. And something I also do, I wrote that down. I'm taking notes as I go. So look, I'm taking notes and I'm running the dang show. I'm, t- I'm talking to other people like you, Steve. Uh, but the thing I, I often do is when I hear a great, um, you know, someone is vetting a book like you just did so highly, I write it down. And as soon as the show is over, I will go to Audible and purchase it. Mm. And it's in my library. So I don't forget it's there. Like, I don't even remember where some of these came from and who said them. Right. It doesn't matter. I know they're there for a purpose. And I go, okay, you're next. I'm just going to go in order. So um, appreciate that uh, a lot. It, it's very valuable. I found that when you can find out what is meaningful to other people that are successful in business, that's mm-hmm. the key for everyone out there listening, um, is to go out and devour it yourself. So let's see what's going on. Dennis Nirmela is coming to us all the way from China. Me how? Yeah, he's an amazing entrepreneur in his own right. He's uh, made, uh, built large businesses, and he's now uh, followed his passion. He's teaching in China. He's teaching English to Chinese uh, college students. I think it's college, uh, and he he's obviously loves what he's doing. And so he was on the show just before he left the United States, and this is going back, I forget how long. It's been probably close to two years now. Um, it, thank you, Dennis, it. for coming on. I appreciate you. I have no idea what time it is there, but I appreciate you for being on here all the way from China. It's a global, global reach here on the Mind Body Business Show. I mean, and I'm not kidding. I interview people from all over the world as well. Uh, let's see. Um, speaking of books, uh, I saw you flash it a little earlier. I would like, if you wouldn't mind, to bring that back up and then also give us a little synopsis of the book, what it's about and um just whatever you want to say about it. You know, the golden toilet. So I'm like you, Brian. I work with business owners. They would come in and they would say, hey, I think I need a new website. I think I need to show up in a search. I think we need to do some social media. But when I backed up and really got to thinking, what is it that they're really asking? These are successful business people, but yet they've been convinced for some reason they need to really get their act together online and what i realized is like one of those foreign films where the their lips are doing this but the subtitle was saying this steve i know i need to do something i see my competitors do it my employees are expecting it of me my customers are expecting it of me but i'm not really clear where i'm supposed to start What is it I need to do? Can you help me get there and avoid some mistakes? And when I realized that, then I knew that I needed to get better and more clear about what it is they do. And it's the fundamentals. We would start an engagement and they would say later, they go, I thought we were going to do this marketing. I'm going, we we are doing the marketing. But what I realized, I wasn't clear on the fundamentals. We needed to get your fundamentals in place first. That's clear messaging some marketing automation, let's get the sales process automated as well, and then let's design strategic campaigns. But if you start off with the strategic campaigns first, it's gonna crash because we don't have our fundamentals in place. One day, we were, we were having this great, I'm serious, Brian, we were talking, our team, we were had their analytics up. We love automation, just like you. We use HubSpot, we're a platinum, level agency right and with hubspot we're looking at look at all these leads coming in they're submitting these forms if there was ever an account that we could be proud of that the analytics were showing and i swear the next day that client comes in and goes he goes steve you know i love your team you've done great work for us for three years i just don't think it's working 
what do you mean that you don't? I could not believe what I just heard. And I'm going, how did, how in the world is he saying this when I see what in the back, what's going on? Well, we were being graded by attrition. He was bringing on, but it was falling off the back just as fast as it was coming on. And when I realized that I had assumed they had a good sales process in place, they were uh, documenting outcomes, they were following up. And boy, was I wrong, but we were being graded against them. Yes. Didn't have our fundamentals in place. That was a big lesson. Uh, you know, you you hit a very sweet spot uh, in my ear when that's fundamentals because that took me back to when I started playing sports as a youth. I love sports, love playing them, and I hated the word fundamental. That meant boring <laughs> in yeah. practice. That meant doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. It was never the thing I liked to do. Never was the word fundamental next to something I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. However, I completely relate that it is important. And, you know, no longer being a kid and being a grown grown adult, it's not that it's not that painful, actually. It's actually when you have the outcome like you do, Steve, always in your in your gaze, you're looking at you see the outcome. It's never difficult. It's just getting, you know, it's just going through the process of getting there. But fundamentals, you know, setting expectations, great communication, all of this. If you don't have that, you're right. It's like how, built on a house of cards or what is it built like a house of cards? Yeah. Um, or foundation of sand, whatever all the wonderful metaphors are. <laughs> but I totally get that. And oh, my gosh, you know, there'll be like these digital ad agencies where where I first started learning this, like like they're very good about their messaging. They have to be because, OK, Brian, we're going to get you the leads. But I'm here to tell you that is the that's our success measure right there. We're done closing them, selling them. That's on you. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I understand that. I appreciate you making sure that was clear. But yeah, so there, there are assumptions that can be made that can cause issues. So I love that you brought that up. Um, uh, that sounds like a great success story to go back and say, oh, we figured it out. Um, maybe we can help you shore up your sales, whatever else, uh, whatever, you know, talents you guys have that you can help them with to get them past that hump. But now knowing, you know, that's the important part is messaging up front. That's what I want to go with uh, with everyone watching is to just make sure the expectations from both sides of the fence are very clear. This is what we're responsible for. This is what you're responsible for. This is what we call success. I don't know what you call it, but that's what our agreement is going to be. <laughs> yeah. So it makes sense. I just <laughs> realized, you know, when, when you say marketing, I see an apple but you may be seeing an orange, right? But right. we're both sitting there talking about marketing for an hour. <laughs> and so that's why I thought this book needs to address all that. Let's get everybody on the same page. Let me tell you, Brian, if you read this book and you come to me, we're a year ahead of the schedule because we're on the same page. We're aligned. We're following a system immediately. That's a successful that's what a real business person does i'm going to design a system and i'm going to win but i'm going to follow my system and you as as leaders we need to help our entrepreneurs implement that system and understand it and here's the thing uh you shared that with me i i, I of course i did research about you uh, before you came on we never met before this and i saw your book i saw your website and I have Audible, an account, and I, I just want to bring this up real quick. I think this is it's sheer genius. It's so simple. Uh, but what Steve has done, as you see on the left hand side, and I'll put up his website here as well. So you know where we're at. It's ROIonline.com. And what I noticed on the left hand side of the screen, I know it's kind of an eye chart for those of you if you're watching on a phone or a small <laughs> screen. But um, the beautiful thing is that uh, pop up on the left where it says, is your website a load of crap? And I, I just love to play off the term, you know, toilet and all that. But here's the, the genius of it. Listen on Audible for free. If you have never purchased an, a, a book from Audible, your first one is free. And what a great way to get your book in more people's hands. Uh, and you can also buy the physical copy for those that like to or enjoy reading the physical copy as well. I just think it's sheer genius. 
I'd never seen anyone do that before. I, I must be living under a rock because they're probably all doing it. I, I don't know. And you do, you do something else that I want to talk about too. That is sheer genius, man. I, I am so glad we got connected. I think Seth connected us. Is that true? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're, you're just, Oh my goodness. I, I get, I am literally goosebumps under my jacket. I'm not kidding. It doesn't take much to get my geek on. So, <laughs> so you know, um, I'm just enjoying the heck out of this and we'll come back to your site here in just a minute, but I wanted to share that because everyone here can get his book for free. And if, if you have already purchased something on audible, just purchase it. I did. I literally bought this book right before the show started. I kid you not. Um, in fact, I didn't even share my screen to prove it to Steve, but he'll see the extra sale come through. And, uh, I can't wait to devour that and find out what, okay. I gotta know. What was the inspiration behind the metaphor of the golden toilet? <laughs> so thank you for asking. The biggest challenge that we have is when people come to you for some, whatever business you're in, you have people coming to you and they come with their prescription already filled out. Okay. So when those business owners would come to me, they go, Steve, I need a new website and I need some social media and I need to show up in a search. Well, if I just said, okay, we can do that. It's never enough, okay? <laughs> Especially if it's not what they really needed. And you know what they call that? If you were to take that, if you got a prescription pad and you went into a doctor and you go, oh, I've got this pain here. I want you to take my kidney out. And he goes, okay, let's schedule it. You know what that's called? That's malpractice, <laughs> okay? And so when I, but here's the thing. I got to get you to stop thinking that the world revolves around your website. It's important. But and finally, one day I was like, how can I? I only got a few minutes to talk about this and I can't say it seven times. So I was like, you know, Brian, I just want you to know your website is just a toilet. Their brain stops. They stop thinking about the argument they just had with their what, whoever before that meeting. My website's a what? It's a toilet, okay? You wouldn't work in an office if it didn't have one. You wouldn't build a house if it didn't have a toilet. But when people come over, where do you hang out? You hang out in the kitchen, in the fireplace, the pool. It's an important piece of a bigger system that makes your house a home. And we need to put it in perspective. And if all we're doing is sprucing up a website and calling it a day, then what's the biggest fear a business owner has? Wasting the money I don't have on something. And what's the most absurd, universal, iconic image of wasted money? A gold, solid gold toilet. The golden toilet. Stop wasting money on your website. Instead, let's build a system that includes clear messaging, automation, and strategic campaigns. Let's win. We're, we're winners here. Mm. I think we were separated at birth, my man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the resemblance is uncanny already. I, I get that, but I think <laughs> that might have happened. <laughs> that, that is beautiful. I mean, don't flush your marketing dollars down the toilet. Instead, connect with Steve Brown. And I'm not kidding. So we will give you his uh, contact information before the end of the show. Uh, and please, if if it sounds like I'm dropping off and saying goodbye and I haven't done that yet, Steve, <laughs> uh, that's happened before. And I'm like, no, that's the most important part is helping people find this individual, which these days it really, in all honesty, isn't that difficult. But I still want to make it as easy as possible uh, for them to get a hold of you. And um, I wanted to talk about um, the people you work with. Uh, so people that are watching and listening can say, you know what? I might be a fit. This guy could help me. And I have a, I have a feeling that probably a much greater than 50% of the people that watch this show would be a perfect fit to get the assistance that you provide. So what is it you do in your company and for what kind of clients do you do it for? So we're, what we're going to do is help you. The number one lever we're going to improve immediately is your messaging. We're going to help your messaging really resonate with your audience. We are a certified, we were the original agency certified by StoryBrand in the application of how to take your content and make it honor the rules of story. Our brain craves information in the form of a story. And when you honor those rules, then when people consume, read, watch a video, read a blog, 
listen to a podcast, they feel he gets me and I trust him and I feel safe. That is just utilizing the rules of story to connect that you emotionally understand that, for example, what the problem that you and I address and help entrepreneurs over is a, their businesses are at risk if they don't start representing themselves online like the big brands. Mm. Okay. That this is not a cute little thing that we could maybe address. This is serious. This is life or death, especially after this year that we've had when we all got hit by the torpedo called the pandemic. Whoever thought that you couldn't shake a hand with a client, that you couldn't have people come to your store, your shop. And if there was ever a time you got convinced, wow, I need a virtual representation of my physical presence and it needs to be top notch. It's now. This is a life and death. It's serious. Okay. And so we need to do it right and we need to get the fundamentals. But your messaging is number one. So who do we want to help? I want to help progressive minded business leaders who are already convinced of this fact. Mm. I, we don't have time to convince someone that just doesn't get it. We need to move now. Let's get your messaging straight. Let's bake it into some automation, the technology that you need. Let's make sure your sales process is honored. Remember the story before. And then let's talk about what strategic campaigns you need to be running. And let's take advantage of this extra attention. But you can compete with the big folks. We just need to follow a system and get our fundamentals in place. And I so resonate with the whole thing behind the story concept uh, in so many ways. And here's the thing, like a lot of people have an idea they want to write a book. And a lot of people think that they're the first one to ever think of that idea for that book. Right. And I see you smile there because that's like everything has been written about unless it's fiction. Right. Uh, if it's fiction, then maybe you can make something up that's new. But if it's not based on uh, reality, it's pr it's probably been written. So what differentiates you from another author who before you has already written a similar topic? It's your stories, mm -hmm. your metaphors, your experiences. It could be your extension of someone else's story that you tell in the book. It's from stage, the same thing, Steve. I know you know this, like when you're on stage and you're, you know, a lot of speakers are so worried about the content, the PowerPoint, the slides, everything being perfect. They, they got to get the information because it's life changing. People care about the stories that are intertwined into that more than they care about the facts, figures, and, and things that will help them to crush it in business. It's just fact. You're, you're absolutely correct that people will, they lean in when they hear a story mm -hmm. and you capture and keep their attention. So I love that whole, it's just the way humans are wired. Like you said, uh, it's perfect. So my goodness, this is, this, I don't know where you came from, brother. I mean, I don't know how we got separated. And you ended up in Texas. I'm in California. Right. We'll have to figure out a way to pull that back together at some point. Let's I mean, we have it. a similar hairstyle, everything. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. But, um, so, <laughs> I stopped getting the haircut for a while. So I just started wearing a cap. It's like, <laughs> we still got to go. It's still showbiz. We got to show up and work. The show must go on. That mm -hmm. is absolutely correct. And that's another thing I love about something you do. Um, and I've seen you in other lives, uh, you know, recorded after the fact. And I noticed that you are very good about continuing with your brand. You know, your T-shirt, if you were to sit up higher, you, everyone could see it's ROI online. I can mm -hmm. get rid of the name. Yeah, there you go. And your hat is ROI online. All the branding. He's got a monitor on behind him with his book. Uh, and I'm just saying all this to, to tell people, all you don't have to reinvent the wheel. All you have to do is model success all, and model. What is that? It's a, it's a fancy word for copy. Mm -hmm. But if we say copy, you go back to your elementary school days where, well, when I was a kid, because I'm older, you literally would get your hand smacked with a ruler if you were looking over and copying from your, your uh, mate next to you in a, in a test or something. So just model, copy with, with permission, with permission. Uh, but these are simple things to employ if you're not doing it is the, get your consistent branding. You know, I don't have a logo or anything on my person. And I started this show this way and I've, I've remained committed to that from day one. And that's OK. So whatever your brand is, whatever your style is, you know, define it, stick with it. If you want to change it up, that's fine. 
Uh, a lot of people have changed that, but I just love that. Um, these are the intangibles, uh, you know, that you pick out from people that are successful. And so you want to model those who are successful. Only those that are successful. How many times have you been given a stock tip by, say, a coworker? <laughs> like, oh, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. You should go buy some. I said, well, you're sitting next to me still working at a nine to five job. How's that working for you? I don't think I'm going to take that advice right now. <laughs> so take advice from successful people and uh, your odds are greatly increased. So there, that's my soapbox. I'm done preaching. Um, <laughs> okay. I like, I like to ask a certain question because it can, it can take some thought uh, in order to, to come up with it. So don't sweat it uh, if it does. But if you were to think of, so where you are today now, Steve, is far different than say four or five years ago in your business and in your knowledge and in your experience. So where you are today, right now, what would you say to someone that are the top three skills that are necessary to master to become a successful entrepreneur or business person? I just three. That, just three. <laughs> Well, I think the first one is persistence. Mm. You you just can't quit. Okay, you just can't. The most competitive profession that exists is not pro basketball. It's not NFL football. It's not that. That's for sissies, okay? Being a business owner, Oh, that's the most competitive. It's you against everything that could go wrong. Okay. Can't quit. Persistence. Number one. Number two, you need to see patterns, be able to start recognizing patterns and build systems. Mm. Okay. Patterns are. You know, when you watch something stupid on Netflix or whatever, you just get sucked into the story, right? You just turn it on and you just get sucked in. But if you back up and see how did they start, how did the show start? In some action, something happened. It got your attention. And then then with transitions, it, it, it follows a pattern. But if you, you're sucked in all the time, you don't see the patterns. And in business, at some point, you got to stop getting sucked in and back out and go, what's going on here and start being able to predict what's going to happen. Then you can set up systems to navigate through these things. You're going to get in my book. I talk about being an entrepreneur is like um, I'm going blank. What's that show where they wear all these goofy uh, protective gear and they get knocked in the mud and the water all the time. I remember the name of it. I know what you're yeah. talking about. That's being an entrepreneur. You just, every time you turn around, you get punched with something you didn't expect. Right. And yeah. so the, all those guys do is close their eyes and run through it. <laughs> but if you contrast it with American Ninja, they've practiced, they've, mm. they've looked, they know when they jump from here where they're supposed to land, they, they are following a system and they practice see patterns, build systems. Okay. And then, then it's like one thing that's really emotionally can impact you is that you see your vision. That's what you're, well, that's why I started it, right? This is why I showed up. And then you share it with your mom, you share it with your buddy. They don't see it. And they're just like going, what are you, Brian, what are you talking about? You're stupid. That can suck the energy out of you. But here's the thing. It's okay. No one else is going to see your vision like you see it. Just be okay with that and recognize that when those that love you say something stupid, it's because they don't see it. It's okay. <laughs> oh, my God. I can so relate to all of this. It's so funny. It's like... Hey, have you, have you made that million dollars yet? I'm like, good God. It's like, what's taking so long? I'm like, oh, well, how long would it take you to do the same thing? Come on now. Yeah. And yeah. you'll never get there because you don't have the same, uh, you're not wired the same. And that's okay. Uh, no, nothing against those that are, that are not. 
God bless all of them. But fam family's the toughest, right, Steve? Yeah. Holy smokes. They're the ones that love you the most, but they're also the toughest. Yes. About, you know, well, pff, you're, you're smoking something strange, man. What, right. what, what stupid harebrained idea is that? Yeah. Oh, man. It's unbelievable. And then you you work with somebody you've that did not grow up with you, not a brother or sister, not a mom or dad. And they're like, man, that's a great idea. Let me help you. Like, you know what? I'm leaving my family. I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 brutal. It's like a vicious bad uh, joke. <laughs> but it's more. It's supposed to love me and support me. And but you got to go on, and and you have to go on your journey regardless of who goes with you. Yeah, and you know, in all seriousness, that can also be a very big motivator, can't mm -hmm. it? It's mm -hmm. like you know what. You just made me want it even more and not because I'm mad at you. I'm, I'm disappointed. I did no doubt. I'm disappointed that I'm not getting support, but it, it drives me, fuels me to say, well, doggone it. I'm going to do it now. It's really going to happen. Nothing's going to stop me. And so take all of these, these setbacks, these kicks in the head and learn from them and turn them around and, and put them into your favor is my, my advice to those watching not to steve he already knows all this stuff he's the one that should be teaching it he probably does teach it i wouldn't doubt it he's teaching it right now teach um it. teach it and preach it holy smokes i just look at the time no so we're gonna go an extra hour everyone <laughs> no we'll, we'll, we'll stay true uh and close it off here in about 13 minutes a little less um this i could literally talk to you for uh, hours hours literally uh, there's, I love the fact that you're into automation cause I was, I'm not competing with you. Mm -hmm. I was coined by another person. I was called the automation master. And I thought, wow, that's quite a term. I like it though. I'm going to go with it because I didn't make it up, <laughs> but I love the fact that you're deep into automation. You've said it several times. It's part of systems. It's very important these days. It helps you save a ton of time and money, uh, and in uh, errors, because an automated system does the same thing over and over again. There's no, there's less human intervention. When humans touch stuff, things can go wrong. Nothing against us humans. I love humans. We're the, we're the ones that created the automation. So it's all right. Um, so I love all that. And you're very astute. You're branding. You're doing live shows. So let's talk. Oh, so this guy came up with such a genius genius business model. This is just one part of what he does. And I asked him if it would be okay to share it on the show out of respect because it, it's so simple yet so genius. I'm like, why didn't I think of that? Which, the cool thing is all of us can do this. Uh, there's plenty to go around. Would you agree, Steve? <laughs> so so, so good. a lot of people want to learn how to do a live show like this. I know this because I've been sought out. I can't tell you how much. And so I did. I came up with a program to show them how to do it. And then I putting together a done for you, done with you, a uh, hybrid type system to do just that. Well, Steve, he's smarter than me. <laughs> Instead of doing that, he said, how about I'll just take that same client. I will interview them on a weekly basis, me and him. And so I, being Steve, will take and create the graphics, the branding and everything around that individual and just bring them on every week. They don't have to go through all this. It's hell. It can be hell of going out, looking for new guests uh, for each and every show, uh, changing the messaging for each and every show, getting the, the social media posts out to announce every, each and every, all the stuff. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. This guy just simplified it by 10 X. So it's 10. It, how do you, it's, it's X over 10. <laughs> and so uh, I think it's genius. So what, where can people find your live? You have a, a several clients that you're doing this with now. Where yeah. can they find that? Would it be on your Facebook or your YouTube or probably everywhere, right? Yeah. So if you go to our Facebook page, ROI Online on Facebook or my YouTube channel, ROI Online, we stream them there. Okay. And so, you know, you think about, your your folks that you work with, they have this deep expertise. When I started this agency, I realized that the biggest challenge our customers have is producing content on a regular basis. You just 
content is king. You're supposed to produce content. So we help them do that. We write blogs, but here's how the conversation would go. Brian, we need to write some blogs. Well, why do we need to do a blog? I never read a blog. Well, it's how people find you. It's how you, okay. So what's the blog about? Well, it's um, how to do, how to carpet bomb your marketing. Okay. All right. So the first thing, so we need to write the blog. You first, you need a plane, then you need some, need some content bombs, and then you need to schedule takeoff. And then we'd send the blog back to the person and they would read it and go, no, this is not me. I don't. I, and so it was like this big wrestling match. Okay. But now contrast it to this conversation, Brian, you're so smart about what you do. And you've got all these people that are on your Facebook page or they're out searching for things. Why don't we do this? I'll have you on and we'll talk about the most common questions you get asked. And I will ask the questions and you just flow. And when we hang up, think about this. They said it just like they wanted. They came with their personality. They came with their unique perspective. And it's just authentic and it's them. And when you hang up, it's approved and it's published and we're gone. Yes. Okay. We just revolutionized blogging to just make it a live conversation. <laughs> yep. And it gets, you see who views it. You see, you see, they'll, they'll show up on like the third or fourth show. How's my hair? Is my lighting good? Can, how's my how's my mic? Is my mic good? <laughs> it's yeah. amazing what they do, and you just do it with them. They become studio experts by osmosis. Yeah, and I love the authenticity. Is wow, that was something that you just said just a moment ago that really resonates. Here's why I'm I'm interviewing you now. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a lot of things that happened leading up to this show, a boatload, and a lot of automation. I'm not going to go through all the details. Then coming on, we have never met before. Um, you, we had questions pre-arranged uh, for the show. I probably hit three of them, maybe. I never <laughs> hit them all. It's okay. The thing is, and now I'm also pressing buttons and changing scenes and, and bringing up banners. And it's a one-man show right now. People don't recognize that. The thing is, I'm thinking about those things. And if I'm thinking about those things, I'm not 100% present for you. I do everything I can to be as close to that as I possibly can. But when you flip the table like you've done, Steve, and that person now, like if I were on the other seat and you're interviewing me, I'm not worried about any of that. I'm just answering questions. That's when you said authenticity, like boom, light bulb. Mm -hmm. Now they are their most authentic self more than ever. And they're not worrying about all of those other things that are, you know, the moving parts, you know, did the VA do this right? Did the, you know, all the things that go behind it. So, you know what? It's, it's time. That was just a bomb dropping moment. <laughs> Smart bombs, knowledge bombs, bombs of wisdom. That all defines Mr. Steve Brown right here. This guy is amazing. Good gosh, this is going by way too fast. Um, I just looked at the clock again, if you couldn't tell. Uh, so there is one final question, and I hope you didn't cheat and watch the whole thing with Seth, but even if you did, it's okay, um, that I like to ask every guest expert on the, that comes on this show, and it's a profound question, and it can be personal, uh, but I found it's just a profound question. And I, after I did it a couple of times, over a year ago when I first started asking this question, I was like, whoa, I didn't expect that. And since then has like been just gold, just gold. Uh, and so I want to close the show with that. But before I do that, we have a couple of gifts. And are you still, I didn't uh, confirm with you before, you had, a, um, you had a gift of your own. Let me pull that up and see if it's correct. And we'll also announce that as well. And I'll give you a keyword. It was pit stop coaching. Is that still good? That's correct. Okay. So stay on. He's gonna he's gonna unload a wonderful gift on you. It's a free month of coaching. That's uh, amazing. So you'll want to stick on so you can see how to get that real quick. Uh, for those of you that are waiting for that five night stay at a five star resort, this is now how you enter. And yes, 
Steve, guest experts are allowed to enter. I've seen it happen and they have one sometimes. It's a random drawing. So here <laughs> we go. Um, so remember before I was saying take notes to everybody and don't go clicking away and taking your attention away. Well, now you have both Steve and my express permission. I hope that's okay if I'm speaking on your behalf, Steve, <laughs> to take out your smartphone, your cell phone and fire up your text messaging app. And here's why. Get out a pen and paper as well. You want to write this down. We got to move on and get this last question and Steve's gift uh, to you all as well. So on the screen, if you're watching on video, what you need to do is take out your messaging app and where you would put in the name of the person you're going to send that text message to, instead of the name, put in this number. It's 314-665-1767. I'll say it one more time. That's 314 314- six six five one seven six seven and then down where you would actually type in the message where maybe you'd put an emoji or two no emojis just flat out letters uh two words separated by a dash or a hyphen that those words are peak p-e-a-k dash vacation peak dash vacation hit the send button what will happen next as i pull the screen down i hope you got that in for all these leave it up here for just a moment uh what will happen next you will get an automated text message back requesting your email address. When you provide your email address, then, and at that point only, you are now officially entered to win. Our automated system is taking care of all of this and your a random winner will be chosen uh, and we'll be announcing that later tonight or early in the morning, usually later tonight, um, but you'll see the email uh, because we have your email address. We'll, we're able to let you know that you've won. So that is that, let's bring back the man of the hour. That's Steve Brown, in case you were wondering. Um, and he has a gift for you. And I'm going to throw that up on the bottom of the screen. And if you want to um, explain what that is and how people can uh, enter to get that, then go ahead and take it away. Yeah. Was, you know, so a lot of people have an idea floating around in their head and they're, they're wanting to pull the trigger. But there's still some questions they have. What Maybe what my messaging should be. Maybe is it this? How nice would it be if you could like have a pit stop, go around the track a little bit, think about it, pull in and talk with a team of experts about whatever it is that you need to consider and then leave with some assignments and come back around the next week and talk about it again. We do this often and we call it the pit stop, the ROI pit stop. So if you just go to ROIonline.com, you click schedule a free strategy session and just put in, I want to do the pit stop. Okay. I was, I heard you talking with Brian. Yeah. I heard you talking with Brian. See that little, that button, get a free strategy. There you go. Just put ROI pit stop, reach your peak, and I'll know what we're doing. ROI pit stop, reach your peak. Yeah. Where was that in? When you put that in, it's going to ask you. Oh, okay. You're just, just put that in there and you'll get an automated follow-up and acknowledgement it'll schedule a time with me and we'll hop on and we'll we'll make fun of my you know whatever something that i did and then we'll get you set up with the team and start doing a, a month four meetings with your pit stop crew wow that is phenomenal now, now ladies and gentlemen please understand and take this seriously because this is steve and his team's time and mm -hmm. as you all know and you're very astute time is very valuable you never it's one thing we never get back as humans money we can make more money uh, but time you can't make more of it um unless someone has figured out a way to do that and if you have contact me immediately but <laughs> most likely not uh and so <laughs> please be respectful come ready to get the job done you know to talk about business mm -hmm. Um, it's okay to open with a little bit of personal, get to know each other, but be, be mindful of his time and his team's time, please. At the same time, I will say, please take him up on this offer. Mm -hmm. Oh, I cannot tell you how many times, or I would just say, ah, you know, who am I to waste their time or to take their time? It's like, you are, you are an amazing person. That's who you are. And you have a great idea. And now you need help. The key is, 
to think about who, not the what or how. Who in this case is Steve and his team. So get connected with them. If you're ready to take, uh, you know, maybe you're stuck like, so oh my gosh, how many people I know that are stuck right now, Steve, uh, that this would be so perfect for. Uh, for those of you that are stuck, this might be the, the right thing for you. And look, have that initial call. Maybe it's not a fit and you'll find out immediately and not waste any more of each other's time mm -hmm. on the flip side. But if you don't reach out, you'll never know, will you? It's like having a dartboard and not throwing the dart. <laughs> and you're not, you're certainly not going to hit the dartboard if you don't throw the dart, are you? So be sure to throw that dart. Uh, just make sure it doesn't have a point on it. Make it sure it's one of those soft nerf ones because you're throwing it at Steve. We, we want to hurt him. So thank you for that. I appreciate that um, very, very much, Steve. And I hope uh, our audience does as well. So we are at that time. It is time for that awe-inspiring question to close out the show. So some people get a little apprehensive, wondering what the heck is he going to ask me? Uh, and that's if they didn't like cheat and see a previous show and know what it's going to be. But that's all right. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter anyway. But um, the cool thing about the question is there is no such thing as a wrong answer. It, it's impossible to answer it incorrectly. It's just the opposite. The only correct answer is yours. And that is really all that makes it personal. It's just unique to you. So it's not like getting into your personal life kind of personal. It's just unique. So with that, are you ready? I'm pins and needles. <laughs> I love it. Here we go. Steve Brown, how do you define success? I define success as you applying your time to what is fulfilling for you. Not, it's not about being happy. It's about getting to go towards that, what you're aiming for. We talked about it earlier. Being able to choose the time, your time, and invest it in a challenge that you want to fulfill that's success. That's going to feel fulfilling. That's going to make you, it's going to grow your self-esteem. It's going to give you experiences that you can help others because you actually attempted something. And there are other people that want to know. They're looking for you to deliver some of your insights. And if you're, if you don't do that, you can't offer that. Hmm. You know what's coming. Yes, more bomb dropping moments from Steve Brown. He is the guy, the man, the myth, the legend. He's been on this wonderful show. And I say it's wonderful not because of me. It's because of people like Steve who come on this show that grace the stage and provide incredible, immense value. And I cannot, I cannot thank you enough, Steve. And I mean this with all sincerity. You spent an hour, an hour and a half of your time with me, a half hour before we went live. And I don't take that lightly and I appreciate that. And you've just provided incredible, immense value for anyone and everyone who was fortunate enough and is fortunate enough to see and or hear your words. So thank you so very, very much, Mr. Brown. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for having me. I love it. And I'm, I hope we made a really great show for your audience. Oh, off the charts, amazing. Love it. And you know what? I have separation anxiety going on right now because <laughs> I really think we were separated at birth. But <laughs> like they say, all good things must come to an end. Really? Must it? I don't know if that's true, but we're going to do that right now. So <laughs> I appreciate everyone who came on and watched. I appreciate uh, those who are listening on the podcast afterward. Reach out, ask questions, visit us on the mindbodybusinessshow.com. You can register there and get announcements, automated, go figure, of upcoming shows. Uh, we don't hammer you with all the spam and stuff. Just say, hey, we got a new show coming up with the amazing Steve Brown would be an example. So we look forward to seeing you uh, register, and we will definitely get the word out about each and every show so you can have great value and have something to model that will ensure greater um, certainty in your success. All right, that's enough. Um, on behalf of the amazing... Steve Brown. I'm your host, Brian Kelly of the Mind Body Business Show. Until next time, be blessed 
we'll see you again very, very soon. So long for now. Thank you for tuning in to the Mind Body Business Show podcast at www.themindbodybusinessshow.com. My name is... 